I'm Jonathan Geller, and this is The BGR Show. This week, we're gonna be looking at Samsung's Galaxy S3 smartphone. This is the company's flagship smartphone for the summer. People are going crazy about it, and we're gonna be giving you a first look. So this is the Samsung Galaxy S3. It's incredibly thin. It has a great display, it has a great camera, and there's some really innovative features in it that haven't really been available on other phones. There's an eye tracking feature that'll keep the screen on when you're reading. There's NFC, which enables you to actually pay with your phone or send files to friends by tapping them. So let's take a deeper look at it. The phone's comprised of different home screens you can add all of your apps to. You can add widgets to it, you can see the weather on the home screen, you can make shortcuts to any app you want. There's three buttons on the bottom. There's a home button, there's a back button, which will always take you back, and there's a menu button, which is a context menu for whatever screen you're in. The camera's really solid. It's an eight megapixel camera. You get a lot of control over the photos you take. There's a lot of modes like burst mode, HDR mode. It uses the same sensor as the iPhone 4S, though the iPhone performs much better than the Galaxy. This is burst mode, which will take 20 photos in rapid succession, and you can pick the best shot. You also have modes that'll automatically look for a friend in a photo and it will tag them instantly. ShareShot works really easily. You just tap a photo. Any connected phones around you will automatically get that photo downloaded and vice versa. And this is really great. You don't have to chase people down to get a photo you want. The video recording on the Galaxy S3 is really good. It takes full 1080p HD video at 30 frames a second. So you can record video of yourself if you want in self-portrait mode. There's also the ability to make it so you can send it as an MMS. And you can also share videos by tapping two phones together. A standout feature of the Galaxy S3 is called S-Beam. And what that enables you to do is tap two phones together to share files. And it'll also enable you to use something like Google Wallet to actually pay for things when you go to the store. It works really easily by simply taking two devices and tapping them together. And instantly I'm able to share from one right to the other. You can share photos, you can share contact information, you can even share a web page you're browsing. So another really big feature on the Galaxy S3 is called S-Voice. S-Voice is Samsung's take on Apple's voice recognition service called Siri. The problem with S-Voice, besides not really working too well and being a little clunky, is that it looks exactly like Siri. What's 10 plus 10? What's Apple's stock price? Here is the weather for New York, New York. The Galaxy S3 is really well built, but it does come off thing a little bit plasticky, mainly because the entire phone's made of plastic. Uh, it's pretty light, it's really pocketable, and it's incredibly thin. There's 4G LTE, there's a quad-core processor, and there's a decent camera as well. I've been able to probably get over a day of battery life with web browsing, email, a couple phone calls, and lots of Twitter use. Overall, I like the Samsung Galaxy S3. It's a solid handset. It's definitely one of my favorites from Samsung. If I was in the market for an Android device, I'm not sure I'd go with the Galaxy S3 though. I really like the HTC One X, and there's definitely some other options you could look at. The Galaxy S3 will be available for $199 from Verizon, AT&T, Sprint, and T-Mobile in the coming weeks. Earlier this week, Apple had their annual Worldwide Developers Conference, and they announced a brand new version of iOS, iOS 6. Apple's calling this the most advanced operating system in the world for mobile devices, and here's a first look at it. iOS 6 features a brand new Maps application. Apple's using their own mapping, there's finally turn-by-turn -turn directions, and there's an amazing 3D mode as well. It's really easy to navigate, it's really easy to get directions, so now you don't need a third-party navigation app. In the phone app, you can see that it looks a little bit different, it's a little bit cleaner, and you also have a couple different options on how you handle phone calls. If you're getting a phone call and you want to reject it, you can reject it, but you can have a text message sent to the person letting them know why you rejected their call. Facebook's now built into the operating system, enabling you to use Facebook from wherever you are. You can tap to post a status update, you can check into a location, and you can even control what friends see it. This also works for photos as well. 
There's also a slightly updated photo interface with new sharing options that again let you share it on Facebook, but also Twitter, your iMessage friends, emailing, printing it, and other options. Almost every other app also has some new features in it as well. In mail, you can pull to refresh. There's also a VIP list, so you can assign certain individuals as VIPs, and that way you can just check messages from them. Weather also has a little bit of a makeover. Again, it's a little bit cleaner. It looks a little bit better. Another great feature in iOS 6 is the ability to have all of your tabs accessible from anywhere. And what this means is that if you use Safari on a computer, you're able to open any tabs you had open on your computer on your phone from your iPhone or from your iPad. You also have a reading list, which was available in iOS 5, but now it's offline. So this way, if you add things to your reading list from Safari, again, you can access them from your iPhone or iPad, and you can read them if you're on the subway, you don't have service. You have a lot more privacy controls, and it's all about giving you the option about who uses your information and data. So for instance, now all apps have to ask permission to access your contacts. Same thing for your calendar, for reminders, your photos, and obviously your location. So that was a preview of iOS 6. It's coming as a free update later this fall for iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch devices. And for the full story, you can check out our entire walkthrough at BeachYard.com. And remember to check our show every Thursday at 11 a.m.